Hey everyone, this is Pamela Coey and hey, I just wanted to thank you guys so much for your comments and for liking my video and um, subscribing to my channel. It, it means a lot to me and I just love hearing from you guys and just comments that you make. They're all really interesting to me and I try to get to reading them all and um, if I can't do it right away, I come back to it uh, when there's a little bit of a quiet time. So this is going to be a brand new series um, that I will be uploading onto my YouTube channel. About a year ago, I posted video number 15, so you might want to look that one up. Uh, and you might remember that the painting was a very yellow painting. It was very bright. I was showing you how I play and it was a lot of fun. Uh, but you know, it really did sit in my studio for about a year while I took a little bit of time out to create my new online painting course, Powerful Design in Personal Color, which features, you know, working with cold wax and oils because um, that's a lot of times what I'm working in. And by the way, if you're interested in that course, it's all online, it's all self-paced, and uh, there's a, work, a waiting list right now, but if you're interested, please visit my website, artandsuccess.com, and just, you know, get on that waiting list. So I hope you'll enjoy this new uh, series of YouTube videos where I'm going to show you uh, how this painting, this yellow painting, evolved into a very different piece uh, that really does express my personal voice and you know all the steps that led up to me being able to finish it because it is now finished. And um, as always, I just love to share my process with you, and I'm I'm glad that you have an interest in. Uh, kind of hearing what I uh, enjoy sharing with you. Um, so again, thanks very much for um, you know being there and commenting and liking and subscribing. So here we go. So going back into an older painting like this, when I've had you know a long time to look at it, think about it, um, but it's still in a in a really early stage. And the only thing that I'm trying to do right now is kind of remember the colors that I originally used and they don't even have to be exact. I do remember that I used Indian yellow. That's the, the very intense yellow. And the red could have been a Williamsburg color, Fanchon red, but I don't have that anymore. So I'm just going to use like Perylene red. I could probably use Cad as well, but again, these are early stages of the painting. Um, definitely use some of the uh, cadmium green. I believe that was and you know some uh, RNF pigment sticks. So here is my palette. I've just laid out some colors here. I've got um, black and I, I still have to get white but I put out some Indian yellow that's over here and then there's my ivory black. Um, here is just a Portland gray which is kind of what comes from gambling when they decide to make a gray and they put all of their leftover colors into it. And then here is my perylene red. And this is before I've mixed the cold wax medium. Okay, so here is my cold wax medium with my Galka gel. And these are pretty large quantities of paint. So I'm gonna mix these um, up to one to one. So I'm gonna put a little bit there, just eyeballing it. I'm using ivory black here. There are many different blacks. There's spinel black, chromatic black, Mars black, ivory, but um, I'm just going to use ivory. It's, it's um, the one I'm most familiar with. Uh, at some point I want to try more chromatic black because it's more transparent. This is my Portland gray. You can see that when you mix a lot of color because you're working on large scale, you need a larger mixing area. And I just decided to squirt out this Portland gray because I wanted to try it out, but uh, normally I would just make my own grays, but uh, this one will no doubt be added to the red and the Indian yellow and get a lot of different variations of tone. Now this white is a quick dry white by Gamblin. So uh, that is the kind of white that I like to use, um, either titanium or titanium zinc. But the quick dry is just titanium. It's not a fast matte color. It's actually its own quick dry. And white tends to be slower drying, and I like to use a lot of white, so I tend to get the quick dry. 
Really want to mix that in. You can either mix your colors on your palette, you know, which is really nice. Uh, you can also mix your colors on the painting. You can do that as well. And since I'm, this is just such an early stage right now too, um, you know, the question is whether I want to go more liquid with some of these mixtures, and I probably will. So first thing I want to do is just get a little bit more space here. So I'm not going to mix a lot of variations right now. I just want to get a feel for what's possible with some of these combinations. So like with the Indian yellow, uh, I'll make a couple different piles here. Here's the original. And then I'm going to want to know how the red mixes with it. It's the perylene red. So put a little bit with that one. Let's see here. I'm going to stay kind of dark-ish on this next layer so we can first figure out what these two colors are going to make. And then here I could try a little bit of black. See how that goes. I could add a little bit of black to this. Because what I'm really trying to do is something that I don't already have on there and what I have right now is a super intense color. So I want to go the opposite way. And then as I'm mixing this, if it gets too dark, all I have to do is add some white. Just go back and forth. I mean, that in itself, though, is a beautiful color. Let's see what happens when I mix the ivory black with the Indian yellow. It's going to go a little green. That's what happens with yellow when you mix it with black because you get a very strange green. <laughs> it's okay. These two colors together are quite beautiful. Right now you can see the perylene red that has some of the Indian yellow mixed with that. It's beautiful. And then here's some of the Indian yellow with black. Look at how green that's turned. And here's the original perylene red. So perylene red, perylene plus Indian yellow, a little bit of black, and then Indian yellow and Indian yellow plus black. And because the surface is very dry and because I want to keep working on it, I'm going to put just some cold wax medium. It's not mixed with any Yelka gel. It's just on this paper towel. And um, so I'm going to be adding that to the surface and just letting it sit there for about 20 minutes. And by doing that, it's just going to kind of reactivate the surface. That's all you really have to do. So as you can see, I'm putting it on here. I just want really a thin layer, so I can do this just to get it on there. I can take a Messermeister tool and just skim it over the top, make sure it's nice and thin, and go over the whole surface. I'm probably going to let this sit overnight, actually, but you know, you, you really don't have to do that. It's just that that's what I'm going to do. And I'll be working back into this painting because it's 48 by 48, there's quite a bit of area to cover. So you want to make sure you get all of it. It was fun to live with this painting the way it was for a while. I had lots of time to look at it, but I just didn't have a lot of time to work on it. So, um, you know, the colors are bright and they're way more intense than I would normally be painting with, but as an underpainting, that's kind of what you want. And, you know, I can enjoy a lot of the playful things that happen, but as far as my aesthetic and what I want in the final painting, um, it's, um, I'd say it's pretty far away from my aesthetic. So I'll be working into this with some bigger shapes and, I'm pretty sure that some of this will be peeking through to the top, but there's never any way to know. I mean, this is just kind of going with um, letting the surface tell me uh, every step of the way, you know, what's needed and what's feeling good, what's not feeling good. And the things that I don't like, you know, they're, all you do is you cover them up. And, and then I try not to avoid areas that I'm liking even at this stage because what I realize is that at this stage, even if I liked some things that were happening, the, um, and, I, and I don't want to talk about like how many minimal layers there are in any one painting, but it's just that because I know I like to distress the surface to get more sophisticated color, this is very shallow right now. 
So even if there was something that I really were falling in love with, it'd be like, yeah, but you know, by the time I've degraded the surface, it's going to be so shallow, I'll be back to the gesso again. So I just know that I want to add more paint to the surface. I want to basically keep playing and exploring and finding my way. Um, it's just a new opportunity to learn something new that I haven't tried before. I've certainly not ever used this amount of yellow before, so that in itself felt really fun and different. Um, and now that I've been here, I know that you know it's probably a little bit too toxic and powerful for me. So I'm going to be knocking back color and introducing new shapes, um, large swaths of color, and um, so we'll see where it goes. So that's now covered with um, a very thin layer of just cold wax medium to rejuvenate the dry surface. It's now ready to take on new layers of wax. And um, the way to tell if you've covered the whole thing is just take your hand over it and you know, it shouldn't, it should feel, you can feel the wax on there. So if I missed an area, I could feel the dryness, but right now I don't feel anything that's really dry. So I think I covered this pretty well. And yeah, okay. Here's some of that rosy color that I kind of think is like the rose matter genuine. And really what I want to do, can you see how thin that is? I mean, you know, I can, I can put it on and take it off. I can make it almost like a glaze, but I really do want some opaque areas here. So I'm going to put it on rather thickly in some areas and it'll take a while for it to dry, but um, that's fine with me because I really want this um, thing going on between thick and thin. And I like these kind of raggedy edges. Um, in some areas, but then, you know, maybe I'll come back and define. You see how you can give all this control with cold wax medium. It, it's just so malleable. It's what's so wonderful about it. And a little paint really goes a long way. Now, remember, I, I had put some cold wax medium on the surface, so I reactivated the dry surface, and it's, um, it's very easy to spread it. And I can get all kinds of degrees of opacity, which means that if I want some of the underpainting to show more, then I can, you know, I'm just going to show you for example, but I mean, I can easily do this kind of thing and then leave some of that painting showing. So then I'm going back to get more color. So I, I routinely do not go back to get the exact identical thing. I like to mix it with something. So. In this case, I've mixed a bit of the, I um, have to think here, Perylene Red with the Portland Gray, white, and, and then I added to it some of the um, Perylene that had some of the Indian Yellow in it. So now the color's a little bit different, not much, but a little bit darker. So I don't, I, I like these subtle variations. You know, that's the beauty of um, spending a lot of time learning how to mix your colors because you start to develop an eye for subtlety. I mean, most people might say, oh, I don't see any difference between this and that, but, and you, you know, even if you had a good eye, you might not see that in the camera, but, but I can see it because it's, um, you know, if I had to define it, I'd say, hey, a little bit more, it's got some Indian yellow in it. And it's not that that's coming from the underpainting, because this is really opaque. You can see how opaque that is, and then here, um, I've let that underpainting show through. Why not? I don't, you know, I'm going to just do that occasionally. Um, come up here. I've still got paint left on my Messermeister and might as well go for something here. And, you know, I'm, I know that sometimes it's hard to cover up things that you may love. I hear that a lot and I, I get that. I, I know how hard that is, but because I feel that the current um, state of this painting is, is just so like thin. I, I only played, you know, like that one time when I did that earlier video and then I just wasn't able to get back to it. So now it's like, um, it's almost like I'm really just continuing the play stage in some ways. It's so far from being done that I don't have, I still don't have to worry about anything. Anything goes, I can't, you know, there are no mistakes that I'm gonna make. I'm not worried about covering up anything because if there was something I loved at this stage, it would be too early for me to save it. 
it doesn't have enough history yet, and history is what I enjoy in a painting, so uh, I'm really just trying to go for some bigger shapes right now, and I'm kind of liking that. I like that um, kind of rose matter type um, hue, but I'm going to now make it lighter a little bit. Again, I'm going to change it because I'm going back in for more paint, and any time I do that, I want to make a change. Warmer, cooler, lighter, darker, anything. It doesn't even matter what change I make, just so that it's different. And now I've got this lovely um, kind of a tangerine, and it's lighter in value than the um, that rosy color quite a bit. So first I'll show you that because I'll wipe off the excess on here. I'm going to clean off the Messermeister, get all that off of there. Here's a bit of that tangerine color. It's actually quite beautiful. And I can go in here and kind of connect that up with what was going on here. Maybe I'll go all the way up to the corner. It's lighter in value than the red that I just put on. But I'm really wanting to, you know, add some nice thickness, some nice opacity to this painting because what it didn't have was opacity. It had a lot of transparency due to the fact that I used so much of that Indian yellow, which is beautiful. But, you know, it's a great way to start. You can use that lovely color, but Indian yellow is also a wonderful glaze and it can come back in the end. And I'll keep some of it now, but I, it's just that it's, um, giving me this real sense of thinness and I don't, this early on, I don't really want it to be too thin. So um, there can be blending, you know, just between these two areas because I've introduced two, two very different things here. This tangerine and then the red, right? So when I pass through with this Messermeister, you know, you can see how I pick up some of the red and I can, you know, put it up here. I uh, can certainly lift up some of this, see how much I lift it off right now, and move it around. I can lift it off as, a, as if I didn't even put anything there. Very cool. So maybe I want to create a hard edge here. That's why I like these silicone tools, because I like a sense of geometry, and you know, if you didn't love a sense of geometry, you may not like these tools as much. But because I know that I am always loving geometry, then these tools lend themselves very well to what I want to do. So here, um, you know, I had this intense like malachite green, I think it was, of an RNF pigment stick, and I've just kind of gone over it with this red. The red neutralized the green, but I can then peel it back and leave kind of a special area of interest. but I still want to have like masses of um, areas right now. I'm trying to give a feeling of larger shapes instead of such small ones. I had a lot of small shapes. I could easily add 50-50 Gamsol and Galka to this and thin things out and start using a brush, but that's not really, I think, I'm not gonna really do that now because I don't, I'm trying to get thicker paint, not thinner. So I this intense red. I'm just cleaning off my Messermeister here. So by doing that, I, I had this big massive shape here, but by putting in this red up here, it's pretty much just pure perylene. Um, I am connecting this mass to this mass, but they're different reds, so there's kind of a nice transition between them. There's still mark making evident, but it's a little bit more quiet. It's too close, and um, it's kind of more of a burnt color, kind of a dirtier red, so it's definitely desaturated. I guess I could, yeah, I could mix, I could um, connect shapes like this. Going over this earlier calligraphy with the blue. I mean, I did like that, but 
you know, maybe some of that will come through in the end. I don't really know. I could save a little bit like that, but I'm not going to worry about covering over some of it either. You can see how he put it on, but you know, you have so much control over how opaque it is. I mean, I just keep going over it and, you know, you, you leave it thick like that or you take it off again. So, and then it leaves that stain behind there. So that's what's cool about this medium is that it's so malleable. You can just so, so easily go into it, take it off and keep playing with it until you like it. And take a bit of this white and just add it on here. So I'm going to be mixing on the painting now. I can even use my hand to get this off. So I put it on, you know, but you can see how quickly I could um, bring it back, some of that yellow if I wanted to. I just wanted to show you that I'm, you know, I don't really care if I cover it up at this point, but it is, you know, just fun to cover it up. And then, you know, when you scrape back into it, you get this really weird, weird shape that, you know, you couldn't try to really create something like that on purpose. And those are the kinds of unexpected things that I like to encourage in the work every step of the way. I want it to be a shape that I never thought of, that I never could have thought of myself because I like to be surprised. I like this green, so I might leave a bit of that. It's really shockingly green, but it's only feeling that way because of what's around it. If this weren't, it's kind of not as saturated as that, so the fact that that's desaturated makes that even look even more green color is so relative it, it depends on you know what it's um, next to and surrounded by that will determine how our eyes actually process the information I'm really fascinated by color but I feel like I have so much to learn so I just don't want, I, I want to keep limited palettes so that I force myself to really get to know my colors. I'm not in any hurry to use every color, you know, that I have. I'm more interested in using fewer colors and really getting to know them well. I kind of like, this is like a raspberry color and I want to just bring some of that up here so that this shape feels somewhat connected. Um, this is very hard edged and then it becomes amorphous and becomes hard again. Amorphous, amorphous, hard, amorphous. Watching the edges just even now because if I do that every step of the game, every, every layer in my painting, if I'm always thinking variation, then it becomes more of a habit so that I don't even think about it anymore. I don't have to think about it because I just naturally will go for something I don't already have. So when you put it on and you take it off, you're actually really mixing it too. And I, it's another good reason to take it off because you're basically mixing it on the panel. And then, you know, maybe I want to something here. There was some nice calligraphy under there. And if I don't want to lose all of it, keep some of it, then, you know, it kind of, kind of mimics what's going on down here, but it's too close. So I might then come in and, you know, do something like this. Introduce a curve. 
And in terms of connected big shapes, it's more about the value. So as long as, you know, I could have something that's transparent or opaque, it, that doesn't matter so much as the fact that the overall way that our eye perceives it is all kind of one, one main value. And so I'm squinting as I stand back and trying to um, figure out how this is all coming together or changing, I should say. It's not really coming together because it's not supposed to come together, but that's not the point right now. Okay, so I've got a lot of this, you know, red color. I've mostly been, you know, adding that. So I've just added the 50-50 um, Gelkid Gamsol um, in this little container. It's my pearling red. So let's see here. I'm expecting it to drip, and I hope it drips a little, but perylene itself is um, kind of a transparent color, so I'm just gonna put that on there. mixes with that other color. I added gray there. Actually, it's going a little purple because of all the yellow. I think the yellow, um, so much yellow makes your eye want to see the complement, which is purple. I mean, there is some purple in here, but the fact that there's yellow makes this dirty grayish purple show up even more. control how much you want to mix it, you know, how many brush strokes show. You know, you could get it really smooth if you wanted to or not. I just, at this point, it's fun because, um, you know, again, you can't do anything wrong. Keep telling yourself that. <laughs> ugly is fine. If you get ugly, so what? It's just another layer. Going back into the gray, but I'm going to change the personality of it a little bit, going a little bit more yellow gray. So you can kind of see here's the new gray. It's also darker. And I haven't been up here very much, so maybe I'll come here. There's kind of an army green which is really beautiful. Okay, so here we are. This is um, the painting at the end of part one. Lots of color, but not quite as much as there was before. I've changed the values, I've changed the thickness of paint, and um, started to introduce some grays, which are the opposite of that highly saturated color. And you can see in the black and white version what the uh, values of the color are doing. Um, you can see primarily mid-tones, some darks, um, very little highlight at this point. Um, it's always a good time to convert your painting into black and white to see what your colors are really doing. So thanks and I'll see you in part two.